Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yes, indeed, as you've seen, the Chief Daily Mamodu joins us next. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Good morning, Chamberlain. Yeah. How are you and Nigeria today? Yeah, well, um, we're keeping our spirits up as much as we can. It's a holiday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be the holiday then. I know some may have half day, some may not even do any day on Friday. Uh, then it will go into <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. I, I envy those people because I'm not going to be one of them. I, I have to keep going. But you're somewhere and we appreciate your keeping up in the wee hours of the morning where you are in uh, somewhere... Montego Bay? Oh, sounds good in, in Jamaica, <laughs> actually. So, uh, some, I think it was six hours ahead of you. So, uh, yes, we appreciate your stay up this early. But just in case, I know, being in transit, you might uh, miss out on some of the recent happenings. For instance, let's let you listen to this particular piece. It's uh, something that played out in Edo State about the deputy governor in case you may have some part of it. Have a listen to this if you can for a minute or so and then we'll just talk about it as we move on to other items too. My good people of Edo State, I thank you all for standing by me under these troubling circumstances as the deputy governor of Edo State. It is a heavy heart yet a resolute spirit that I come before you to address the recent events that have unfolded within our dear state. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It is a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harsh because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, PDP. The allegations brought against me are nothing more than a full screen to conceal the true motive behind this impeachment. It's a flagrant abuse of power and a betrayal of the trust that the people of Edo have placed in their elected officials. I will stand firm in my resolve to see justice done. As we stand united in the face of tyranny and oppression, I urge all to remain calm and go about our lawful duties as good citizens and true Democrats. So there you go, Chief. Um, the Deputy Governor is now former deputy governor, uh, I think he says he's going to fight on, but they have uh, put in a new deputy governor uh, within your party. So I guess uh, what? It doesn't just remember the pause. What's going on? Uh, well, I followed the news uh, even from where I am yesterday. And for me, I prayed, I hoped that it wouldn't come to this. Uh, I don't have the facts of the case. I don't know what went wrong between two friends, two brothers. Uh, they worked very closely together in the past nearly eight years. So, but I'm just one man. I'm also from a two state, apart from being a member of DDP. Uh, so I wish him well. I wish our state well. Uh, they, are, they say there is no smoke without fire. There must have been very, very big issues between them. Husbands and wives do quarrel and they head for a divorce. So nothing is impossible also in politics. Like I said, I, I wish him well. Okay. And I hope that they can still be friends thereafter. What well, do you consider, when people use the word... Uh... Uh, democracy, is it mature? What kind of democracy do we have? Transactional politics, we still have a long way to go. How do you re relate with those kind of narrative when these kind of issues uh, are approached in this way? If you fall out with somebody, you kick him out and then keep as much as you can to yourself. You see, democracy in Nigeria has not fully grown, has not fully developed. Uh, democracy in Nigeria today 
is a game of winner takes all. The governor is always the boss. Uh, the president is always the boss. And that is why you will see that we've had this kind of scuffles in the past, whether at the presidential level or the gubernatorial level. Uh, so, like I said, there are some things must have gone wrong between because they used to be very chummy, they used to be very close. Uh, they are both my brothers, they are my friends, I, I love them both. And I always wish that some things would not happen. But when they happen, all we can do uh, is to move on with your life. I know that there is life outside power. I have never been in power, so I, I know that you can still enjoy your life without being in power. So uh, that, that's my attitude. But our democracy definitely uh, needs a lot of fine tuning so that we can avoid some of these problems. Because each time it happens, those affected are the poor people, the ordinary people, the ordinary voters, the ordinary supporters of each candidate of, of each uh, them. So, but uh, as long as governance does not suffer, the reason why I was hoping it won't happen is that we have just a few months left uh, before they leave office. But definitely, uh, the governor must have wanted to make a point. Uh, I've listened to both sides of the divide, and people have said this for A and that for B. So, like I said, uh, for now, anybody who ag agrees to be a deputy or uh, governor, a vice president, <laughs> be prepared for anything. It's, it has to be uh, a show of absolute loyalty to your boss. That is the lesson I've picked from it. Mm. Well, speaking about which uh, governance, some of the, we've had quite a number of people who've been here and they talk about the policies that the government has put in place and, of course, supporters of all the key aspirants and candidates at that time always say, well, after all, this party's candidate said they were going to remove subsidy. This party's candidate also said they were going to do the same thing. So if they've done it now, uh, isn't, is it any difference from what they said they were going to do? But ever since then, several other policies have been put in place by this government. So from your perspective, how do you think those policies are coming along? Well, I beg to differ. And I will use the example of a man I love to quote all the time. Uh, Chief M.K. Abiola used to say, the way you shout GA will determine whether people are going to start running or people are going to dance. Yes. Virtually every, you know, uh, candidate promised to remove the subsidy. But how do you really remove a subsidy on the very first day when you have not even settled down to government, you have no cabinet, you have not consulted the people, you have not prepared the people, and you just wake up? And even President Balatinubu himself said it, that he just had a brainwave. And... He received some Holy Spirit courage from God knows where. And it, this thing must go. In one fell swoop, and Nigeria could laugh since then. Nigeria went into coma. It's like a new doctor taking over the affairs of a patient. And without studying your patient, you just thought, oh, look, all I need is just one injection. Is that that this injection will kill you or keep you alive? And that is what happened to Nigeria. Uh, President Inubu came on the very first day of his government and just fired this unfortunate shot at the ordinary people of Nigeria. Because no matter how much you sell, well, some people can afford it, no matter how much. You, you, the electricity, electricity tariff becomes. Some people can afford it. But what about men and women of modest income like myself, who are barely surviving in our country today? What of the middle class that have been wiped out? So uh, it is not a matter of whether they, they, they promise, they all promised it. It is the manner. If you listened, so Alaji Atiku Abubakar, 
he had told us that the process of remo removing subsidy is not new. It had already started. Even under the president, Solution of Passengers, the process has started and they were to be done in phases. You cannot tell a man who is barely any 20,000 arrived and say, whether you like it or not, you can afford to buy well. So just go and buy it. I don't care where you are, where you're going to get the money from. I think that is a bit too harsh and draconian on the people. Mm. Mm. Well, it's been how many months now since that happened? And I know that after, you know, that that happened just a few, how many days ago did you put this up, this post on X, which has now gained at least 4.1 million views. Incredible, Ooh. where you were telling people that, look, it has become necessary to for me to offer apologies to those who have asked me for one support or the other in recent times for my inability to help, um, you know, you say you're currently overwhelmed by your own project. I require absolute discipline and focus. I know that a lot of people say, oh, we're going to adopt this tweet. <laughs> and, and indeed they have. They, you know, they've reposted it many times. But I can tell you, Chief Momodu, if you are a man of modest means, you know, I don't know what those who work with you are going to say they are. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, away from that. This is certainly, uh, this is where we currently are. As you did say, you say you likened uh, you know where we were to the, the, the uh, to a patient which you know needed treatment, and a, a lot of people will agree that before the president came on board, it was all agreed that Nigeria was economically ill. Well, not just economically, perhaps in many other regards. In the area of corruption, we're not doing so well. You know, we needed some cleansing there. In the in the area of economy, of course, we needed a a big help in the area of security has been a bother for many people as well. Uh, these are all the major areas that people have just been wondering what exactly is going on with our country. So, uh, yes, the, all the presidential aspirants and eventually candidates, you know, were like doctors who were, you know, coming up to say, look, we can help the patients, we can do something about it. So if the president offered, because some people will say, from afar, there's been plenty of diagnoses that had been made as to what precisely was wrong and perhaps some of the quick wins that we could have. When you look at attempts right now to recover from that first shot which the president fired, um, in, is it in the area of trying to help the Naira recover? Um, is it in the area of trying to ramp up what it is that we earn from our crude oil sales uh, by ensuring that, you know, uh, our military are up to the task of crude oil theft, etc. Are there areas where you would say we are making progress? Yes, we were down here, but it does appear that we could be making some progress. And given the trajectory we are on, perhaps we could recover. Well, I pray we recover. Uh, but I think it is too early in the day for anybody to see or feel that recovery. Uh, my attitude to it is that I will know that we recovered when the doctor returns the patient to the state he met him. There is a Yoruba saying that if the gods cannot make our lives better, they should not make it worse. So I believe that the government of President Bola Tinubu will do very well if they can wake up the patient. Because right now the patient, trust me, is still in ICU. Uh, no matter how jubilant they are, uh, Naira is now 1,000 Naira dollar. It's still a shame, it's still a disgrace uh, that we can jubilate over such uh, <laughs> nonsense. Uh, the the what how does the ordinary man on the street feel today? I feel this time you are distributing rice. We have all become scavengers, we have become beggars, and all you see now is that palliative of one palliative, which country lives on palliative, but the country has prosperous, as great as Nigeria. Nigeria is among the greatest human beings on earth, and yet we've been turned into cards. People begging for money. People who are desperate and now taking to kidnap the to I mean, so it does not matter to me whether the Naira 
suddenly becomes 800 to one dollar. What is the impact? I sell a magazine, for example. The cover price of vision in the last almost 20 years has been maybe about 2,000 naira. So, with this level, and I print, where I print, we use one of the best printers in England, the Memphis. So, imagine how much I was printing and I was selling. Am I going to increase the price of the magazine, which is not food, it's not an essential commodity, to 10,000 naira? So, everywhere, everyone is affected. So, Nigeria cannot continue to fool itself over the rates uh, of foreign exchange. No, it is the people. We must worry about the people and not about foreign exchange. Uh, we don't have electricity now, the tariff is going. Up again, and when, while we were still battling with the fallout from the fuel crisis, so it seems that this government is very bold, but and very courageous, but in the wrong direction. What is the essence of being bold? These people are going to die at the end of the day. So they, they must show some mercy on the people. That is how I feel. It was clear, though, that the path to recovery was never going to be easy. I mean, people who were planning to take up this office of president knew that whatever it was that he did, there certainly was going to be some pain felt. How were we supposed to manage the pain? No. Uh, it's beginning to sound like what we call oxymoron literature. Yes, there will be pain, but the pain must bring relief. If you have a date, why do you think paracetamol? It is to relieve you. It is not to make your matter so. But if the very first injection your doctor gives you knocks you out and knocks you out for nearly one year, you, you, your, your family should be worried. So I'm very worried for my country. That, that's the truth. So they can say everything, every government. Since APC came to power, had always blamed its predecessor. The same thing they are doing now. In the same party, they are blaming Buhari now. In fact, I don't know how Buhari is feeling. I know every day he comes out to give praises on President Tinubu. I think that is deliberate. That look, don't let me make matters worse. Let me just manage these people. I'm sure he thought his own party will continue to ridicule him months, almost one year after he left power. Maybe some of the things he did, he would not have done it. So, APC has thrown us into crisis, deep crisis, and it's not that we lack help. It is not that we lack the people or the manpower, but the first thing is your team. If you assemble a team that says yes, yes, yes to everything you want, if you have a party, that is seeking to turn Nigeria into a one party state. Things are not going to go away. If you have a legislature that cannot give us a transparent budget, something as simple as a budget, see the fiasco. So, this thing is not just going to go away because the government cannot be a government of magicians of Abracadabra and you just wish that, yes, yeah, this thing will go away or this thing will happen. The patient is still in coma. The patient is in ICU. How do we get the patient to wait and start working again? This is very important. So don't be deceived by anybody telling you you were doing well. Oh, the situation was very bad. They don't know the situation was bad when they said they can do it. All the problems they they told us they can do it. And the very first day, you killed the, the patient. Anyway. Well, there are big questions right now because this is a democracy. And ideally, I mean, when a ruling party is perceived not to be doing well, what we should be seeing will be, you know, the alternatives from the other political plat platforms. It doesn't appear that, you know, there is any uh, option right now or uh, we're seeing the signs that other opposition platforms are actually, you know, coming together. It does appear that, you know, there's a lot of 
political problems even bedeviling these other political parties. I think you've alluded uh, to, to a one-party state now. And, you know, there are big questions. Just yesterday, we saw some uh, members of your political party come up uh, to, you know, ask for the resignation of the acting national chairman, you know, accusing him of, you know, betraying the PDP. I do not know, as a member of the political party, whether you share their sentiments or whether you think that the acting chairman is doing the best he can. Well, well whether I share their sentiments or not, we have crisis, and we have crisis, and most of it self-inflicted. Uh, anybody who loves his or her party should be concerned, should be worried that nearly, if I over one year after the last presidential election, we are still assigned one man to our party, a man who has since moved on to work for another party, and boasting that he will work for the party in the 2027 presidential election, I think we will accept that truth that if we do not approach, approach this fellow, you know, it's like a bull that is stuck in your neck. Until you get it out, there will be no rest, there will be no peace. And I've said this on your platform several times, that if I had the power, I would have disciplined some people. You can walk against your own party openly. I mean, any, any self-respecting person, if you are not satisfied where you are, you resign and go away. The party is not owned by you. The party made you everything that you are. Everything. Today, the rascality that is going on in Nigeria is so unfortunate because you can say clearly that it seems we have two presidents now in Abuja. A man, no minister is supposed to be superior to anyone. But today, we have a superb minister who drives in a presidential convoy of his own. And not, why? Because he worked against his party. But I know for a fact that wherever that person is, they can't trust him. They know that a man who destroyed his own father's house would waste no time in destroying another person. Funny. So we're watching. But I know that it seems right now some people in our party have decided that enough. You know, they they were being gentle, they didn't want to ruffle feathers, but today enough is enough. Uh about anti-national chairman, I don't have much to say. I don't know that there are always rumors in politics. Uh but if I were in his shoes, he has tried his best. And uh, and since the, the neck is supposed to meet, of course, you can see some people have already rushed to the courts again, which is very, very unfortunate. Some people are rushing to the courts to stop the neck meeting because the strategy is this. And fronter. I will be fronter in mentioning names now. The truth of the matter is that the man who is a minister in some weekly? Who is sitting in Abuja plotting with the ruling government to destroy his own party, but at the same time, keeping his own party in his pocket strategically because he still hopes and dreams of contesting in, in the near future, just in case Tinubu is not able to make it. I don't know how to do it. We can not all be in a state of connected stupidity. <laughs> you are enjoying power in APC and you are keeping GDP in abeyance. And everybody's watching a party that has produced some of the greatest presidents Nigeria has ever known. From Baba Basunjo, to Jaradu, to Good Lord Jonathan, then one young man who has been fortunate 
Be look at what I can to be a minister, to be a governor for eight years, and now a minister again. This young man who should be thanking God, he is the one holding all of us to ransom. We will all be fools if we don't react immediately. We must react and react vigorously. No matter how much money he is worth and he is spending. And the courts that give all these jejun, you know, uh, decisions must also be sanctioned. But you cannot just be giving frivolous, frivolous judgments, frivolous injunctions. The, the neck of a, of a party should not meet after so many years. What kind of judiciary does that? Well, Chief, so, so what, what happens to uh, some of the serving governor or some of the former governors? In addition to that, does, do people expect that you will probably support a new presidential candidate entirely from the ones who vied before when the time comes in the party? We have not reached that stage yet. We're jumping the gun. A party has to be in a state of stability before you start thinking about elections. And this is the problem with us in Nigeria. Everything for us is about the next election. It's not about governance. Look, I have participated twice in running the presidential race. And I can tell you, it's not a game of emotion. So many things are involved. What does it matter whether I support a big government? Is it about age? If it's about age, Joe Biden will not come after Obama. Joe Biden was vice president to Obama. So how come since Obama we've not been having younger people in power? We have Donald Trump. Now we have Joe Biden. In Syria alone, we had a young man there. He was, was kicked out by his people. And he brought in Joseph Bokai. So is it what it takes to be a president of the country? Unfortunately, now People like Wiki are working with the Tinubu template of grab it, run with it, then go to court. That is not the democracy we fought for. And anybody who loves his country should be worried. But I can see that a lot of us have become gamblers. As long as I'm comfortable or I've crossed the bridge, let the bridge collapse. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you. Whosoever wants to be president in 2027, if you want me to give you the analysis, I'll give it to you clearly. In, in the past, when I gave my analysis, people have abused me thoroughly. When I said, if you don't have this structure, that structure, structure, not just about you or your party. There are so many issues involved. A structure where a president of the country votes and shows who he votes for, and sending subliminal messages to the security agencies, to INEC, to say this is where we stand. This is who we support. In a country where the president is tantamount to a god on earth. No. So any governor or any senator dreaming now that he can take out Tinubu in 2027 must be dreaming and dreaming big. It requires much more than that. So, Chief, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. When we return in just a moment, we need to go to this quick break, but don't go away because we will be right back. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We'll still have uh, Chief Dele Bombondi here with us. He's joining us virtually. So, Chief, in addition to what you uh, were going to say, let me ask. Now, assuming we had any other president, maybe from the NMPP, the PDP, or Labour Party in position or in power, what is the guarantee, or are there any guarantees whatsoever that things will be practically different because you did make reference to the economy, returning us to where we are. Because if 
we we'll still have persons who pad the budget or they still put line items like furniture allowance every year still around governments. They still put a cutlery in and around governments because you know you can't be buying those kind of things every year. Somebody somewhere is taking away the money. If you still have people who look out for their own personal interests above all else, so and then in states, probably a similar narrative. So if there were any other person in there, given the way we play our politics, are there any guarantees that perhaps we might have even been any way economically better? Again, my attitude is that you cannot guarantee anything in life until you have been tested. I always tell people, you cannot say you are a saint until you have been tempted. It's the same thing in governance. Um, there are people, and I remember, because they, I like to give this example, because I like the gentleman a lot, that's why not being in, in this party. Uh, Mr. Robert, today, right, Fashola, you know, when he came, uh, some of us were quite worried, ah, who is this quiet man? Where is he coming from? You know? And he came. And he was able to demystify governance in Lagos. In fact, he surpassed what he met on ground. And that is why a lot of people see him as a superman. You know, there was a man <laughs> who people thought was just a dancer in PDP. My good friend. You know, uh, now Governor Adimola Adeliki. I mean, I so spent day and night watching him at work, calling his people and begging them, please let us work for our people. If we work for them, that's the only guarantee of the second time. But a situation where most people today is making say they are already working for 2027 for Tinubu to be president again when the whole country is up in, in smoke. So this is the crux of the matter. Mm. You need men who have conscience. Mm. So Chief, pardon me to jump in, in there. You know, no, for, for... Me, please. Yeah, okay. me. The rumor in town yeah. is that all this padding that we, you and I are complaining about that it is not about just the Senate president or a few people in the Senate. That is a way of the party stocking up against any eventuality in 2027. You can run a, a, a country like that. I also believe that for you to be a good president, you must have managed people and resources very well. A lot of the people they have around today. I've never managed any business. They lived particularly on government. So that's why you find people. When you have people, if you look at it, if you look at Atiku Abubakar today, you will see that these are two strong businessmen. Whether you like them, you hate them, they've been able to manage people and manage resources. So the difference is clear. Uh, but right now, we have proliferated our government with people who don't care. Just get power. Whatever you do with it, come with it. This is going to affect us moving forward. And I hope that you and I will continue to speak up against this kind of rascality in our government where a young man who has never done any business in his life He's on week, I don't know of any business they are doing in his life. So because you are able to buy by which means that you have become a fan omega. In in rivers, we had Governor Dili, we had Rotimi Amechi, we had everything. And this gentleman a few years ago, we thought was doing well in the area of infrastructure, but suddenly got intoxicated with this power. So you cannot be approached by anybody. You left as governor after eight years. You want to control the governor who is there because you believe he was your houseboy. And that's the only reason you chose it. Well, Chief, yeah, you know, I, I was going to talk about 
the some of the factors that uh, perhaps might have contributed to the former governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola, doing as much as he did, where he, I think at a point, he also did acknowledge that, I mean, it was relatively stable. Certain persons are taking care of some political ends so he could focus and concentrate. But when you then speak about uh, reverse matter, politics, I mean, you also say it's a game of interest. I mean, while he was there as governor, a lot of people gravitated towards that and thought, oh, yeah, it was all well and good. Things were rosy. And then when you leave the office, you get this kind of scenario. And after all, um, several people say even today, even as we speak, the scenario of him uh, at least playing a role in who succeeded him is not in isolation. There are several other scenarios that exist today, but they were able to work things out amongst themselves, but it doesn't mean that they are still not their political godfather. And besides, you told us too some time ago that you, both of you are friends. You, you went there, you tried yeah. to you know, ensure that things work well between himself and uh, the presidential candidate of PDP and things like that. So what there went wrong along the line? Uh, what went wrong is that one man's personal ambition took over everything else. And a lot of collateral damage came with it. Look at our governors in Abia, in Enugu, in Benue, losing all, losing their senatorial beliefs just because of the ambition of one man. You see, what a man should know is that when you cut your nose thinking you want to spite your face, you will look very awkward. That's the case of Wiki right now. Yes, he was my very good friend, and I continue to say that he was performing well in some areas, especially in the area of infrastructure. But when a man allows anger to take a better judgment of him, then everybody will leave him to roast in his own steel. So we've left him, and we're watching him. Everybody's now watching him like a circus clown. Now, what is wrong with this man? How come you fight everybody? I remember when this my the former governor of Ebony, the day the man left our party. <laughs> I've never seen such. <laughs> he called everybody. He said the most attacking man. He granted serious interview. And I'm sure you know you, you remember this scenario. But but we know that we've seen they're working together now. That's the way politics goes. I, that is what I but because he doesn't have the choice. Let me tell you, Wike feels he is fully in Tinubu and his people. But Tinubu's people know him well. Everybody, there's no Nigerian today who does not know that Wike cannot be trusted in any matter, especially if it affects his interest in power. For him, power is everything. Money is everything. Wike is not a moderate. Is a man who believes that everything must be absolute. But it's you like have a few him. more minutes to go. So let me just yeah. ask you. Some say PDP some did uh, brought these things upon themselves because in the first instance, they thought Peter B himself should have been the one to get the ticket. And when the party and several people watching from our side thought it was supposed to be him to get the ticket. And when the party orchestrated and did whatever they did, and then they couldn't even have him come back to the party. And that was the beginning of the whole downfall of the PDP. So if they had brought him back true. and look at the, the vote of PDP, the vote of Labour Party, supposed to combined vote, which hasn't happened. And they thought uh, PDP have themselves to blame for all of this. No. Chamberlain, maybe you have forgotten that Alergi Atiku Abubakar beat Peter Obi in 2019. They still did not win. It's, it, 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 if we have to discuss this, we're going to do a PhD thesis today. But what I want to tell you that you, you use the word orchestrate. Who orchestrated everything? Wiki. Because Wiki wanted the ticket by fear or foulness. And he went all out and obliterated Peter. That's what happened. The, if you ask me today, how come Peter will be abandoned? a party that gave him a, a vice presidential ticket in 2019 is because of the likes of Wiki. It was the one manipulating, bringing this chairman, remove this chairman, hire this person, fire that person. That is what happened. 
So, so was it okay at that time when it was VP candidate? The party didn't have any objection to it at the time? Oh, no. The, the party at that time, because we didn't have a wicked ambition at, at that time, at that stage. So if they had allowed Peter Obi to remain and continue to work with alleged people of Waka, maybe things would have been different. But everybody ran away. The moment they saw the, the money power from Wiki, <laughs> everybody was in trepidation. That is what happened. And for people to say, oh, so, uh, as if it was a people or it was uh, somebody who chased, no. The people decided that they were going to throw Zoni away when Wiki's hand picked the chairman and uh, what have you. That's what happened. Well, Everything was manipulated and orchestrated just in favor of weekend to be to get the ticket. And he almost did. As you've said, you know, if we're to really discuss this matter, we'll do a PhD thesis <laughs> on this program. And perhaps even all of our two hours won't be enough. But right now you're out of Nigeria and I do not know when you're coming back. Even with the post you did uh, to Nigerians on Please Bear With Me it was... A picture of you taking in the UK, it would seem. So, do you have any plans of coming back to Nigeria and, you know, being amongst the people just very much like the presidential candidate of the Labour Party? Is this something you still want to I, do? I live, I live for information. I live amongst my people, and I'm already entering retirement. I just left Nigeria a few days ago, and I'm coming back to Nigeria in the next few days. I spend more time in Nigeria. I've just built a library resort in the bottom where I intend to spend more time producing books and doing academic work and, if possible, lecture some students here and there. Gratis. All right. I have a village home in my village in Yeve, in Owan East local government. So I am a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I can't, I can't afford to live anywhere in the world. So I choose to live in Nigeria. All right. So I have a home in London. Don't forget that I was in exile in London. So I've kept a home there. I, All right, I Chief. have worked in Ghana. So I live partly in Ghana. But Nigeria is home. And I'm coming back fully to Nigeria. Because we cannot continue with this rascality. All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Chief Dele Mamodo, former PDP presidential aspirant and publisher of Ovation Magazine. We appreciate your time. Uh, six hours ahead of you we are but yet you still believe so thank you very much indeed once again thank you thank you